you can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Oh, Hi. welcome to Relax. I'm Colleen Bounder. I'm Eric. <laughs> You're not going to say your last name today? I'm You're just husband. like Cher today? What? Like Cher or Madonna? No last name necessary? Oh. That'd be cool. Just Eric? Just Eric with a K. That's what I wanted to do when I was a little girl. It's like, if I ever get famous, I'm just going to be Colleen. Well, I think nowadays you'd have to add a Lil. Like a, a Lil? Yeah. Isn't that just that one guy, Lil Nas? I think there's there lots more? Of, I feel like there's lots of Lils now. Is there? I think everyone, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Lil Eric? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that cool? <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't think he's... All right. I don't think it is either. <laughs> Welcome to our Let's podcast. Hope that doesn't stick. Welcome to our podcast slash our date night. Yeah. Um, we don't get to like hang out too much these days during the day, so this is our excuse to have a little date and hang out and chat. So that's what we're planning to do tonight. How are you, Colleen? Not great, no. love, but it's Shocking. okay. We're gonna have fun it's not tonight. Not what I was expecting you to say. Uh, shut up. Um, we're gonna have fun tonight, though. Mm -hmm. But first, you always uh, do. Before we hop into the fun stuff. <sighs> Whoa, jeez, Louise, you guys, that was not me. I'm working Shockingly, on it. A... Shockingly, that was not me who just belched. <laughs> that was Eric, and I've never heard you burp like that loud. It's, it's they're uh, involuntary right now. I'm working on a kombucha. A kombucha for my pooch, and uh, and it's making you it's, burp. It's I'm having a strange reaction to this particular one it's okay. and it's very bubbly on the hmm. inside yeah i've usually which makes me bubbly on the outside i guess i am the belcher in this relationship but if eric does burp it always sounds fake to me every time eric burps it sounds like he's going <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound real <laughs> so i was surprised that was impressive thank you all right so before we get into date night and just kind of <laughs> talk about Whatever. Um, we're going to talk a lot about products, uh, uh, baby products today. Well, I know that sounds. Fun. I know it sounds boring, but trust me. Well, we got to do it anyway. It'll be good. So if we're in the process well of buying baby products for the babies, and um, it's brought up a lot of interesting conversations in this house, and also nostalgia about the baby products that our parents had. That's for us. mostly what we're going to talk about. Yeah. Also about our days and whatever. So anyway, um, first let's talk about what needs to relax. Eric, you go first. Um, okay, sure. I'll go Who first. Who needs to relax? Why not? What needs um, to relax? I've, the, I've had this strange thing happen to me in public lately, anywhere I've gone, which for us is only doctor's offices because mm -hmm. you are pregnant with twins um, mm -hmm. or uh, this week the dentist because my teeth hurt. And I've noticed in all these lobbies, this happened four different times, there's someone else waiting there with the gall to be watching something on their phone or listening to something on their phone without headphones, mm -hmm. full volume, without a care in the world that anyone I else can never. hear. Or, like, I think it's so strange. I mean, you know, maybe I should admire it because the confidence you yeah, must have as a person to be like, Not I'm going to scroll uh, uh, TikTok or watch a YouTube video on full blast in public. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And just not care that other people can hear it or are possibly disturbed or annoyed right. by it. Um, yeah, that's crazy to me. I could never do that. It doesn't bother me so much in public. You know what really bothers me is on airplanes. I haven't been on one in a long time. But when How could people, you do that? On, you wouldn't even be able to hear it over the engine. Oh my gosh, if you didn't it happens headphones. all the time. I feel like on airplanes, people just like watch stuff full volume. I don't. I don't know. And I'm like, I've maybe seen bro. that once. Like a, a woman with an iPad was watching something without headphones. Yeah. But I, th I think maybe she just forgot she didn't have headphones. Do you think they need to relax these people? I think so. Um, I think they do. I don't think you should do that. I don't think that is <laughs> is uh, uh, is appropriate. Well, um, where's the last time this happened? The dentist for you? Like, do you know what they're yeah. watching? Like, were you interested? Was, it was like it music video. It was like a music video. Oh, okay. They, uh, yeah. And like when I was waiting for you to get one of your tests done at the Quest mm -hmm. place, mm -hmm. there was like someone just watching YouTube music video after music video, mm -hmm. just blasting it. And I, and I just thought it was so strange. I kept like, throwing some side eye over there. And then mm -hmm. there was a, there was two other people waiting and I was like trying to like make eye contact with them. Like, isn't this ridiculous? <laughs> and no one, and no one like looked up at me. So I was just like left That's alone. That's so classic Eric. Ne never to say anything. He's just looking for people to make eye contact with and like hope that just they to can relate have... just on a human level, just to re <laughs> relate about the different things that 
uh, annoy us as, as humans and that we think, you know, in this case should relax. Um, but that brings me to another point because I mentioned dentist and in an episode probably two months ago, mm -hmm. I mentioned my who needs to relax of the week was my own wisdom teeth. Mm -hmm. um, and my my fear, my my I made the statement that I will keep them forever. Yes. And my fear of any kind of procedure mm -hmm. to relieve the pain that is the four wisdom teeth in my head. Right. Uh, and jaw bones, I guess, more specifically. Mm -hmm. But, um, well, we've come to uh, <laughs> <laughs> Eric lied, a crescendo guys. in Eric this ordeal. Eric lied to you all. He's not keeping them forever. They're being I taken wish, from him. Uh, they might let you keep them. Sometimes they say, do you want to keep I, them? Yeah, well, that's not really what I meant. Um, <laughs> but so when you are listening to this uh, episode, if you're listening to it when it came out, I will be two days into my misery, <laughs> into my misery of getting all four wisdom teeth um, removed. And I am very nervous <laughs> about I'm being such a baby about it, probably because I don't think you're being you a baby. Saying, it's scary. Well, everybody does this. Everybody has to do this. Um, for the most part, I think everyone I know has had this. I think people usually do it in high school. Well, I true. think they wanted me to do it yeah. in high school. True. I do say that because I'm trying to let you know, like, you're going to survive it. But I also think everyone has to do this, almost everyone, and everyone freaks out about it. Like, it is scary, the thought of, like, being put under and people doing surgery yeah. in your mouth. Like, when I brought it's it up, scary. Right. When I brought it up in that episode, I saw a lot of responses to mm -hmm. it. And no one was like, oh, it's a piece of cake. It's easy. It's, it's, it's everyone was like, watch out for this. Why? Oh, I had to do that. It was terrible. Watch out for this. Like, be careful. That, you know what I mean? It was all kind of, um, kind of commiserating over, like, yes, it is absolutely terrible. Mm -hmm. And all these other th bad things, you know what I mean? Not, none of it was, yeah. nobody said like, just do it, no big deal. Like, well, I did because, well, but I was lucky because I got it done in high school. I was like 16 or 17. I wish I had done that. And they were, it, it, I, I think maybe I'm the only person on the planet, like it wasn't that bad, or maybe I just don't remember it. But from what I remember, <laughs> like it really wasn't that bad. Like I was like totally fine. Like I did, I don't think I needed the painkillers. Like the day after I got it done, I was like eating a burrito. Like I was totally fine. Didn't swell like nothing. Like I was completely fine. So I'm just saying that to be like, maybe that'll happen for you. <laughs> Even though that is not how I'm it usually goes. Sure. Uh, but yeah, so in, in two days of us recording this and I guess in a day and a half, I will be. Yeah. In the throes of sleep dentistry. And I'll be blending soups for you. you gotta tell How do you me. blend a soup? I don't know. That's it's what already I, soup. I looked up like what foods you can have when you're, you get your wisdom teeth out. And that was like the first thing that kept popping up was like blended soups. I'm like, I don't know why. I don't like, want soup when I didn't have my wisdom. I know, you know no one I mean? wants soup. No one wants soup. But like the idea of like a chicken noodle soup, fine. I'm sick. I'm not feeling good. Sure. But like. I'm the getting all. Of, I'm can't even sit, <laughs> I can't even sit still right now. How are they going to. Oh. But the idea of like a like chicken chunks blended into a beverage. Like, no, thank you. Nobody asked you for this. Nobody is saying, just hey. Saying, like, it sounds really gross. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, everyone. Have Eric and your thoughts and prayers as you're listening to this. I'm also like, am I just going to be saying a bunch of weird stuff? Just when the, I come out just of it? the day that you come out of it, and it'll just be me yeah. there. And luckily, I don't record my life or anything, so there'll be no record of. <laughs> you're, not, you're not getting any of this. Don't, please don't. Can I record it for you to watch? No, I don't want to really? see it. I really don't. Oh come on. I really don't. Okay, I don't want to remember it. I don't um, <laughs> oh, you probably are. Yeah, I forgot no, who I, I won't, forgot who I I'm, won't. I will respect who your I'm wishes. Trusting to pick me up and get me home. You're just going to be filming me the whole Did time. Your right? brother, yeah. your brother said something that blow blew my mind. He, you told me that your brother said when he got his wisdom tooth out, his doctor took his phone while he was like under under anesthesia and like took a picture of him, like. Yeah, my brother said that when he woke up from the from getting his wisdom teeth out, he woke he, like he opened his phone and it was a selfie of him unconscious with a bunch of gauze in his mouth that like that the, his dentist took it has Ted taken as a joke. But that's not that's what he said. like that is not I would be so angry if my dentist stole my phone while I was sleeping and he mm. was doing a surgery on me and took ugly pictures of me. Like that is like very much it must be illegal. 
Like, I Surely. can't get over this. Yeah. Like, when he told it to me so casually, I was like, this is must be a crime. Anyway. There was an episode of TV. I don't know if it was like Seinfeld or, or Friends where like one of them goes to the dentist and they wake up and their pants have been unbuttoned. Maybe what? it was Maybe it was Curb Your Enthusiasm. I don't know. There's like an episode of TV where like the, I don't know the main character about. like goes to the dentist and is put under when he wakes up, his, his pants are unbuttoned and it's because. What? I don't know why. I don't know why I'm bringing that up. I don't either. So I, I hope don't that know. doesn't happen either. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> what? I, that's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> but anyway, Eric's very nervous. And depending on how he feels uh, next week, he might not be my, my co-host. I might need to find a replacement. So let me know who should replace him if he's not swole. feeling great. Um, but let's move on to who I you? think needs to relax. You know, Lovey, I know it kind of relates to what I said last week, but my blood, my blood needs to relax. I feel like you talk about your, your blood every week, love. No, I only talked about it last week. I talked about getting blood tests last week. I yeah. was like, oh, you have to get all these blood, all this blood work all the time. And it's constant when you're pregnant. It's so annoying. And, um, that is true. And I got a lot of blood work done last week and mm -hmm. my blood is such a freaking tattletale. And like, it made me look so bad. Like I've, I'm, I'm just like blood. Like, come on, be on my side. <laughs> like, why are you tattling on me? Listen to this is like, what are you talking about? Okay, so I got, we got all my blood work back, and basically, like, I'm anemic, so I have this huge iron deficiency, and I have uh, a vitamin D deficiency, and I have a pro. I'm not getting enough protein. My protein levels are crazy low. I didn't pass the first gestational diabetes. Uh, test. So I have to like do all this stuff to like to prick my finger a billion times a day. And I might have to go back. It's, 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 it's just reading your, your, the, your whole medical history. I'm to just the explaining, I'm explaining to them how much like my blood totally tattled on me. Like, come on, work with me here. Like we are, I just think it's annoying. Like my blood in particular, not blood in general, like my blood it's pissing me off right now because it like totally made me look bad to my doctor. I think all I these things all are very stuff. common with twin pregnancies and they sure. do these tests for your Listen, health I know and the baby's I know, health. And I know it's for my health and for the baby's health, but it's like, can you just be normal blood? Like, uh -huh. why do you got to be so different? Uh -huh. Why do you got to cause problems? Like, just cooperate. You know what I mean? Like, I, it's like, just cooperate blood. Like I hear what you're saying. Like why? Why in the English language? Why is um, my blood being so like not cooperative? Like how come? I, I don't think it, the things that are determined is 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 the decision made by your blood. I think it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it needs to relax. Uh, sure. Because now I have to like take all these extra pills, and I have to like prick my finger and draw blood and put it on this little machine that gives me numbers that I don't understand. Uh -huh. And I have to like change my diet, which is the thing I'm really upset about because like I love In and Out and I love candy and I like chocolate. <laughs> it's just really yeah. bothering me. I don't me. think you. I, I don't, could you do that? Could you change your? Of course. Well, I have to. If I have to, I have to for the babies. It is not confirmed, by the way, that I have gestational diabetes. Um, some women, a they're lot of women get an, this. They're just keeping an eye on, right? So on like, everything. The, you're supposed to like, you take this test and then you take another test. So I took the first test and my numbers were a little off. And so now we're doing a bunch of stuff to try to fix that before I take the second test to hope that I pass the second. I don't know. Who cares? But I just, I'm just annoyed at my blood. I'm just like, well, how come that day you couldn't have just like cooperated? Like, aren't I feel you, like, yeah. Aren't you kind of like fainty about blood your own blood seeing yeah i'm more faint no. it's not about blood it's about like the idea of a needle going into okay. a vein and sucking something out of my body like it's not even the needle that bothers me it's the idea of my my blood inside of my body is being sucked pulled out of me i don't like that so that's what makes me fainty it's actually it's not it's not the needle going in. Mm -hmm. It's not needles in general. It's like, I just want to keep my blood in there. I don't want you to have it. Right. That's what I don't like. So anyway, that's what I think needs to relax. Yeah, week. I hate that you have to go through, through that. Well, for you, you hate it because I just complain no, about it just, a lot. We're just talking about <laughs> things that are in us and doctors just want to take them out of us. I know. Like, just leave them Yeah, in. exactly. Like, yeah. you know, they want to take your wisdom teeth. They want to take my blood. Like, come on. And it, it's the same to your wisdom teeth. Like, relax, wisdom teeth. Can you just cooperate? Just like chill? Why do we even have them? Yeah. Well, evolution. I mean, we're not going to get into that talk, but that's why they're there. We don't need them anymore. Evolution? 
Uh, yeah, it has to do with evolution. Are you being serious? Oh, well, I was going to. Well, we don't have to get into that. That's like a whole other yeah, like like problem that. topic, probably. All right. Um, but you know who doesn't need to relax? It's our first sponsor of the day. All right, guys, did you know that psychiatrist visits can cost up to $500 per session and then traditional therapy visits are over $100 a session? I know this. I did know that, yes. Because I have paid for this. Yes. <laughs> that can add up to thousands of dollars a year. Cerebral is an online mental health service that offers prescription medication, counseling, and therapy for anxiety, depression, ADHD, insomnia, and more. It's basically everything that I have. So I actually found out about this too late. Uh, I had already gone and paid all the dollars and done all the hubble, hubble jubble. What's the word I'm looking for? I think hubble double jubble is right. <laughs> Um, but Eric got to, a chance to to use this wonderful service. I did use it, yeah. For and things. For things. We, we, don't got, have to, we don't have to go into we this. We all got things. Um, but yeah, I found that it was extremely easy. I was kind of surprised. I'm like, this is really how this works. Mm -hmm. um, you sign up online, you answer some questions, and then you're immediately in contact with um, a care team. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They got all the things. It's all right there. It's all online. And it was very shockingly easy yeah and and, and it was super fast that's what blew my mind because like i i've waited for therapists to be available for months before and it was just like you're like yeah just sign up and did Starting it and tomorrow. it was like all yeah. done immediately it was really wild so it's one of the few services that provides prescription medication online through a licensed provider and ships medication straight to your door, which is so convenient. There's unlimited messaging with your care team and with the Cerebral mobile app. It's like having your personal care team wherever you are. You can connect with your counselor and therapist on your own schedule through your laptop or the Cerebral mobile app. So these affordable treatments are one third of the price of traditional therapy. So Eric is saving a pretty penny. And I am jealous of how much you saved. I wish I knew about this sooner. Well, do we have a code for our listeners? Oh, do they get? We, we sure them up? do. For the listeners of this program, you can receive sixty-five percent off your first month Whoa. of medication management and care counseling at getcerebral.com/relax. Go to cerebral.com/relax for sixty-five percent off your first month. That's just a total of $30 to get started. Join Cerebral today on their mission to make quality mental health care accessible and affordable for all. You guys, this is really wonderful. You should definitely check it out if it sounds of interest to you. Uh, the treatment options are available with or without insurance. Cerebral is in network for several insurers and they're working every day to grow their partnerships. And even if you're out of network, they'll provide you with the necessary paperwork so you can easily submit a claim. So if you're worried about insurance, stuff they got you covered they'll figure it out it's really awesome really easy and it's uh wonderful that they're helping to make mental health issues more easily solvable so that's cerebral check it out all right so since i haven't really seen much of you today should we talk yeah, we about really our day yeah i don't feel like we've ever really done this on the podcast where we just like literally talk about our day but i don't know what you did today yeah i don't know what you did either and i don't know how else i would find out i didn't <laughs> ask you on a podcast <laughs> um well uh, my day started off very dramatically because I had to prick my finger and I was very stressed about it. Actually, you had to prick my finger. Yeah. And I was, I was there for that. I remember that. Yeah. I, I made, that I made Eric prick my finger. It was very traumatic for me, but it didn't hurt. I didn't feel it at all. And yeah, it was you actually not a big out about that. Well, it's just like scary. It's like the thought of like draw your own blood and like put it into this machine to like, I don't even know what it's doing you're in there. You're tough. It's a tiny little. Thing. Just a tiny little prick. You had absolutely no reaction to it. It didn't hurt at all. Yeah, no, it didn't. It was totally fine. But it freaked me out. Just the idea of it mm -hmm. uh, freaked me out. So that was how my day started. And that was like, the one part of the day where I was with you. And that's what you're <laughs> telling me about. Um, and then um, I, you know, put Flynn to sleep and let you have a break because you were with Flynn all morning. I was. Because um, I got up with Flynn woke up very early. I guess I should have started there. Flynn woke up very early. And I spent like an hour and a half with him. And then I was like, you know what? You're going to your dad because I'm dying um, with this pregnancy. I'm just totally useless. So Eric let mm. me sleep while he uh, hung out with Flynn. And then you pricked my finger. Mm -hmm. And um, then I gave Flynn a nap. And then I got ready to go to a baby shower today. And it was mm -hmm. my first time going somewhere in a group of people since the pandemic started yeah probably other than your family 
Yeah, I mean, I've been around my family, and that's basically it. I've been pretty strictly quarantined. You've seen like a friend here or there, but you haven't been like a. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it's kind a of like gathering. a party, a gathering. Yeah, like it was very safe, and that's why I felt fine going. Was um, it's a baby shower, so of course you have to protect pregnant women at a baby shower, but also. Um, everyone had to be vaccinated and show their vaccination card. You had to wear a mask and it was outside and everyone had to social distance. So it felt very, very safe. And it, there weren't that many people there, but it still was very, I know we're a little bit behind. I feel like most people out there have already like gone out and done stuff and been around lots of people and traveled, but, um, well, that's fine for them, but they're yeah, not- that's fine. But, um, I'm pregnant with twins right. and we have a child who's not vaccinated. And, um, and so we've just been taking it very, very seriously and being careful as I'm sure a lot of people have, especially parents. Mm-hmm. And so, um, it was my first time being around people and it was really overwhelming. Like I know mm. everyone else already has been through this, but like I, my heart kind of stopped when I walked up to like the patio where everyone was and I was like, oh, there's people here. Like it was <laughs> very like, it was stressful a little bit. Like I was like, my heart was, my brain was like, you can't be here. You need to leave. There's lots of people here. Um, it was just really weird. And uh, I said hi to my friends. And then after like 15, 20 minutes, I was like, I think I need to go. Like, I think I'm uncomfortable um, just being I just I think it's going to take me a while to get used to like being around a bunch of people again. It was really weird. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I had that experience going back to set and, mm-hmm. and there being tons of people around. Um, but like, yeah, I haven't. I still haven't been to like a, a social gathering or yeah. out to like a restaurant or bar or. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was really What else bizarre. are people doing? I don't know. Traveling. I think people are just kind of doing whatever they want now. Good for them. <laughs> uh, we are not. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was really they're being really safe and keeping others safe. Yeah. So um, it did feel very safe. It was very safe, but it was really nice because um, the parents of the, uh, of the baby shower. Mm-hmm. Uh, are two friends of mine and they're having twins just like us. And so I really wanted to go and support them and, and um, be excited for them. And, and just, I don't know. I feel like having twins is a whole other. You're not going to say who your friends are. I mean, that's weird. No, it's not weird. I just feel like it's like name droppy. (laughs) Um, I don't know. Should I, should I say? So weird. Why am I so weird? (laughs) (laughs) Um, no, I just feel like, I don't know. It was Lance Bass. Mm-hmm. Is that, I feel like it was weird to be like, I went, to, I don't know. We're friends. We've been friends for a long time. He, um, has used to watch Miranda videos a million years. Like I'm talking a decade ago, probably he said he longer. used to go on his radio show or yeah, something. Yeah. He had like a, a radio show every week and I would go on. I Lance think like, Bass of the, of the Backstreet Boys. No, and, of NSYNC. What did I say? You said Backstreet Boys. I said NSYNC. Were you joking? <laughs> Were you being serious? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Do you not know? Oh my gosh, lovey. Those two kind of blended to- together. Never. Okay. No offense to the Backstreet Boys fans out there, but NSYNC was so my jam. Mm-hmm. And NSYNC is no offense, Backstreet Boys. Backstreet Boys are wonderful, but like NSYNC was better, in my opinion. Yeah, I would agree with that. But you don't even know the difference. I no, I do. I don't know. I was I. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he asked it me. It was to be- <laughs> neither was really my thing at that age. Yeah. Um. He asked me to be on his. Uh, podcast a long time or a radio show a long time ago. So I'd go on all the time as Miranda and he's just like the sweetest guy in the world. Yeah. And his husband is the sweetest guy in the world. And I just love them so much. And they're having twins too. I and know. so we were texting when we found out, I was like, Oh my gosh, we're both having twins. So we're very it's excited. Cool. You'll have friends going through. Yeah. Yeah. It's so crazy it. that I have, um, we're going through it. Good friends who are also having twins. <gasps> Whoa, baby girls, something knee. But something is jabbing out right now. Whoa. Yes, this is weird. This is we're getting to a really weird part of pregnancy where like they're getting bigger and they'll push like their butt or their head or their elbow or foot up against my skin. And I can tell it's like some body part. Sometimes I can tell. Sometimes like that's a butt or that's an elbow. It's always or a knee. so it's really weird. <laughs> shocking to me to feel that I always always immediately like jerk my hand away. So I'm yeah, like, whoa, that's you. crazy. Um, I can't imagine it happening. Within yeah. my own body. Yeah, it's really stressful. You are a superhero of so some are kind. You. I don't know. Um, but anyway, after the baby shower, it was very fun. It was very nice to see my friends. You brought some cookies home. That was brought nice. Brought some cookies home. Um, then, oh, and, oh my gosh. Um, 
so one of Lance's best, one of Lance's best friends and who's worked with Lance forever. Her name's Lisa. She's amazing. I've known her forever too. She was on this reality show on Netflix called The Circle, mm -hmm. which I love and I'm obsessed with. And so you for really most of the time I was there, I was like just driving her nuts. I'm sure she was so sweet. She always is so sweet. But like, I was just like, I need to know every detail. I was asking her a million questions about being on The Circle because I love that show so much. Well, that so stuff's much. fascinating to hear because I've had friends that have worked on the production side of a couple reality shows and just to hear how produced they mm -hmm. are, like like the the final product that you're watching as a viewer, like you, you assume that you're watching reality. This is reality television. It's like the farthest thing mm -hmm. from like it. So it's, it was, it's cool to like hear behind the scenes of those yeah. kinds of uh, programs. And the circle is one that I do. You I, like it. I do we kind like of it. get sucked in. <laughs> uh, it is kind of, don't even lie. You love it. We kind love of it. Hashtag interesting. Hashtag circle <laughs> life circle fam it's, it's hard okay so like if if i don't know i feel like people might now if you haven't watched a circle and you try to go watch it you're gonna be like why did colleen say that we should watch this because it takes a couple episodes and then you get hooked like at first you're like what is this yeah and then in a couple episodes then you're like okay i really love this and this current season that's on is really good but anyway that was completely off topic um but it was really it was fun to chat with day. her and then I got home and um, Eric went up to take a shower because he'd been with Flynn basically the entire day um, alone with that little like, crazy little boy. Yeah. And so Flynn and I, he he just sang. I've been working on the railroad like 20 times in a row dancing. Oh, I think was, we got some of that. Yeah, we have a little bit of him singing. I tried to I tried to get some footage of him talking and singing tonight. He did kind of a bug of the day instead of kind a truck of. of the day. Should we show that to them here? It seems kind of like you naturally intro it. So yeah, maybe so there's something. This is Flynn being a total nut today. Let's hear that. Flynn's bug of the day. Okay, what bug of the day do you have today? You Thank you. Here's my bug. <laughs> <laughs> what are they, Flynn? What are those called? Pop. Papa? Is that the name of the cricket? Yeah. yeah. That's a funny name. Yeah. Flynn's new obsession is bugs. And so we're bug. doing bug of the day now. And he has caught a bunch of crickets today that he wanted to show you guys. Flynn, do you want to sing? Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol. So that was bug of, oh, he's shaking the crickets. Oh no, we got to go. <laughs> that was bug of the day slash singing time. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> so he's a little cutie. Isn't he's, he a uh, cutie? He's getting to be a little showman. He's, I wonder I where know. he gets that from. I don't know. Uh, and he's getting to, um, every day we got to go catch some bugs. Dada. Mm -hmm. He's obsessed Let's go with catch bugs. some bugs. So that was pretty much, um, the better part of the 10 hours I spent alone with him was hunting bugs, bugs. And he's getting kind of brave and good at it. Almost too brave because there's lots of spiders and things that I wouldn't want him to try and grab or, mm -hmm. you know, wasps or, or bees. But mm -hmm. like with crickets, he was like down on his knees with his bare hands, with his bare hands, like trying to grab them. And yeah, I was we ended not like up, that as we kid. ended up with a bug house filled with like six or I seven think crickets. There's currently crickets in our living room. I, I, I let them go before okay. we started. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> I generally, sure. well, that's kind of my routine now is like we put him to sleep and I come downstairs and then let go of the bugs that he has caught that day. Right. And this that's actually happened the last three nights. Now, your guys' thing is like catching bugs. It's, it's not my thing. I, I, I'm very supportive of him doing it and I always act very happy about it. But bugs, as we know, if you're an avid listener of this podcast. Oh, yeah, we've you're had famous for episode. hating bugs. I'm famous for That is how I got famous because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so famous right. um, for hating bugs. Mm -hmm. I really don't like them. I don't think we need them. I think they just can go away. Oh, um, they entertain our son for sure. Flynn and it's so fun. Loves. Yeah bugs and so i pretend to love bugs for flynn 
He loves spider whoops. He calls spider webs spider whoops. <laughs> spider whoops. Look that over there, spider whoops. That's it's my favorite thing right so now. So when he, when you guys go to catch bugs and he knows that the bugs he caught the day before are gone, is he upset? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, he doesn't let it go without an explanation. Yeah. Like he's, he doesn't just like accept the fact that the bugs are gone. He needs to know where, why, mm -hmm. how did they get there? You know what I mean? And I don't think I've ever told him the truth. I don't know why I instinctually <laughs> am like, I'm not like, oh, well you went to sleep and there was bugs. And so like I went and I sent them back outside. I'm always like, they've, they flew home. They had to go back to their family outside. <laughs> they have a mommy and daddy too, and they had to go back. Out. You know what I mean? Like, why? Why am I lying to him? I don't know. You just why don't, don't I just say, yeah, I dumped him in the driveway? Like, why don't I just say? That's not as nice. Yeah, it's it's like sweeter to think that like they went home to their families. Um, like but he did. has an in incredible memory for where each bug, what is it around our whole house? Because there was like a gnat, like a tiny little gnat mm -hmm. that had like somehow gotten into our house and upstairs and like died or somehow in our bathtub <laughs> Drowned and like was stuck to the side of the bathtub and he did a look and it was on the tip of his finger, this dead little gnat. <laughs> and then he scraped it onto the side of like a cup and then he put it next to the bathtub where it remained for days and he would check on this dead gnat <laughs> night after night. Where's my bug? Where's my bug? He named it something um, <laughs> I think he named it shampoo. It. It's whatever's around him yeah. is what he'll name the bug. Um, <laughs> so uh, when eventually like I cleaned up up there and had taken that cup down to like put in the dishwasher the next night, he was like, where is my bug? Mm -hmm. And he was like really upset. Yeah, he was upset. He's like, where is this bug? And there's also I, I don't think I've told you this, but like we have a, a little balcony off our bedroom that is just covered with L.A soot you mm -hmm. know what i mean whatever dirt and soot yeah. and is in the in the air here and there's this there's this dead beetle upside down oh. right outside our balcony door just laying there and first thing in the morning with me and him when we're getting up is he runs over to that curtain whoosh, and he's like there's my bug <laughs> and it's just i'm like why doesn't the wind or something i gotta get rid of this buggy it's because he always wants to check on it first thing in the morning oh. 8 a.m we're looking at this yeah, this dead bug. This well, and it's sleeping, it's sleeping, it's sleeping. And Flynn's yeah. eyes is sleeping. Um, Flynn is very good. I have to. Um, before we get into your day, I want to. That was my dad. Was it? That was me doing my day. <laughs> um, but I wanted to say that he he caught a cricket the other day, and he had just been playing with the hose, like with water, and he named the cricket hose. Right. But it was so funny the rest of the day him talking about it. He's like, where's my hose? Where's my hose at? And he would be like, oh, uh, hose are eating the chips, you know, like, but it was just like every, I really love I, hose. And it was just like my two year old just was talking about hose all day. And it's just <laughs> so funny and awkward um, and obviously so innocent. But it just it was hard to not like giggle every time you said that. Um, it's also it like, a very good name for a bug. Hose. Yeah, sure. All of his names are good. Every name was every bug was named Buttis for a while. Mm hmm. Um, we don't know where that came from, but he just, Buttis. Buttis, his, that was the first bug he named. It was a cricket. And we asked him for the first time, like, what are you going to call it? What's its name? And he looked at us like, oh, I get to decide this. Like, right. it's a tough thing to do. And he thought about it for a while. And then he said, Buttis. Buttis. And so that then was everything a, was Buttis. Everything was Buttis for a while. And now they have names. Nice. Yeah. He's getting better at the names. He is. Well, anyway, um, before we get into the next part of our podcast today, which is uh, talking about how not safe we were as children <laughs> and our terrifying things our parents did. And I think I'm, they did. OK, we're here. They're great. I am. I am shocked we are here, like thinking about the stuff that we went through um, safety wise. But before we get into that, I want to say thanks to our next sponsor. Let's do it. Our next sponsor, you guys have heard us talk about a lot before. We love them so much. It is Helix. Of course. Good old Helix. We have a Helix mattress and it's fabulous. It is so cozy. It helps us to sleep better. It, it's wonderful because like it is designed for what you need for your sleep. Yeah. Ours in particular is for side sleepers, mm -hmm. if you will. So, which we both are, butt to butt. Butt to butt. And um, so it's it's really, really wonderful. It's helped me a lot with like my shoulder and neck problems. When I wake up, I used to always be so sore and it's helped so much. It's wonderful. 
So how they know which mattress is great for you is Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way that you sleep. Everybody's unique and Helix knows this. So they have several different mattresses uh, to choose from. They have soft, medium, firm mattresses. Mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot, which is how I sleep. <laughs> uh, mattress is great for spinal alignment to prevent morning aches and pains, and even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size sleepers. So when we took the Helix quiz, we were matched with the Midnight Lux. Doesn't that sound great? It is great. Uh, we wanted something that Good was name. more firm, medium firm, um, and we sleep on our side, like we said. And so that was what was chosen for us through the quiz, and it's been wonderful. We sleep better. We like it a lot. Um, it's soft, but still very supportive. It's just a, a wonderful mattress to I have. I had never had like a good mattress before. Yeah. And I'd never been one. like mattress shopping or gotten like a good. Yeah, it's pretty great. Well, it's great because you don't it's have to do the mattress do shopping. Life. Who wants to go mattress shopping? Yeah, you also don't have to do that. But I'm just yeah. saying I, it's not something I'd ever done before. It's like how, had a nice right. new mattress. It's great. Yeah. And when you do, we take this quiz and then the mattress comes right to your door shipped for free and you don't ever need to go to the mattress store ever again. They somehow yeah. squeeze it into a, a little box. And it's really fun to unbox. Yeah, because you, know? you cut it into whoosh. Yeah. Helix is awesome, but you don't need to take our word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 and by GQ and Wired Magazine. Helix has been recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving sleep. So just go to helixsleep.com slash RCE, take their two minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10 year warranty and you get to try it out for a hundred nights risk free. Wow. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't like it, but you will. In fact, you'll love it. Helix even has financing options and flexible payment plans. So a great night of sleep is never far away. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash RCE. That's helixsleep.com slash RCE. Speaking of mattresses, we got to get cribs. Oh, yeah. So you were, you, so boxes have been showing up to the house. Yes. Um pretty consistently mm -hmm. with different baby products some of which I'm familiar with some of which I am not mm -hmm. um that you are I assume only at 2 in the morning are ordering online mm -hmm. for, at least for the most part. Right. Um and I I was looking at them and I had this idea I was like can you explain this stuff to me? Like, and this is when we get to talk and then we can talk about what our version of that was mm -hmm. when we were youngins, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's crazy now the, you know, how intense baby products are like, they're right. all really intense and they all get recalled. And so you can't Even from a year ago. Yeah, so, so talking like, about them many years ago. Oh yeah. So like, the the stuff we had for Flynn we can't use now. Like the my number one favorite thing that we used for Flynn when he had colic was the rock and play. It's like this little like swingy rocking bedish type of which is now banned thing. in and every it's banned. state. You can't get it now. And his car seat, his his newborn car seat, can't use that one anymore. So basically, almost all the products we had for Flynn we can't use for the twins. And so we have to buy all new stuff, like starting from scratch. And so the list of things we need to get is you, I'm not ever going to let you see it. It'll well, for cause any new parent is like endless, but like when it's you're wild, when you're dealing with two, um, you know what? I, I looked online and I, I was before we started uh, uh, and I was waiting for you in here. There's, there was some twin mom had, had recommended not to buy two of everything mm -hmm. buy two of the same thing, like two different versions of that, because what if one is preferred to the other or what if they have different things? So mm -hmm. if you just buy two of the same thing, mm -hmm. you're kind of limiting yourself. Does that make sense? Yes, sure. But then if they both like one of the things, then we, we only, only have, have one. Yeah. I feel so, like we're, screwed. I mean, we just have to do what we did with Flynn, which is like figure it out as it yeah, happens. Of course, like, of course. you know, swing, he didn't like the swing. So yeah. we got rid of that swing and we tried a different swing. I just wondered, I'm like, is that good advice? I was just saying, I was just I think, Yeah, it's good advice. I mean, 
anything's good advice, I guess, at this point, you know, it's it, it's weird with twins because the products are different. So the stuff uh-huh. I loved with Flynn isn't necessarily the stuff that I can get this time around. So we surely not. And, and, and there's stuff you don't even think about, like baby monitors. Like I'm like, oh, I had to get like a split screen oh, yeah. baby well, monitor well, with two cameras. Let's start. Let's start there. Baby monitor. Yeah. It's not just going to be a baby monitor now. No, it's, it's a like split screen, split two screen, monitor, night vision, night vision goggles. Yeah. Like so it it's so that you can have a camera on each baby, but you only have to have one monitor to watch both babies on at the same time. Uh huh. And so like I have one of those and then there's like a, a nursing pillow that's well, made for let's sl- slow down a little oh, okay, bit. Sorry. The, f- for there's the, a lot of for products the, for the premise here. Did your parents have a baby monitor they didn't for exist you back then? Like not even audio ones. I don't, I don't think, think so. Yeah, no. I don't think mine did either. No, because uh, certainly, I, was, I mean, obviously, video. I, no, no, no. I was talking to Jessica, my sister in law, the other day, and she has a, a 13 year old. And she was telling me that with her 13 year old and with her 11, 12 year old, she said that she only had the audio one. The visual uh-huh. ones didn't work. And they finally came out. She was like, it was so blurry. You couldn't see anything. There's no night vision. It was just like, not, it was like totally useless. Right. So, um, you know, we're, she's like, you're so lucky. You have no idea. Cause like back when I started having babies, like these didn't exist. It was just an audio version. Well, Now. Yeah. It's like a camera has night vision. And also you have controls to talk to it. Like there's a speaker in the camera so you can talk to the monitor and mm-hmm. it'll talk, talk to the baby. Yeah. And you can, um, like move it around. Mm-hmm. Like the camera like moves like with a control, you know, you have mm-hmm. essentially have a remote control mm-hmm. for it, like an RC car or mm-hmm. something. Um, but yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't think my parents no, I even think had an just- audio. What you just, you just put the baby in the room and like, if you hear him, you go get him. And if you right. don't, oh, well, like, yeah. <laughs> I think that's just kind of, I think your mom at one point said to me, like, yeah, just put him in his crib and let him cry. And just, which is like a thing a lot of people do now too. But like, yeah, I don't know. Just, yeah. yeah. Just like let him cry. And like, I don't know. You'll hear him if something horrible happens, I guess. Right. Um, yeah. No monitors back then. So that's, first of all, that didn't even exist. I feel like most of the products I have to buy now didn't even exist. I think exist they must have had au- just just an audio version at some point. I I don't think when we were I don't time. think when we were babies they had that. I don't know. I could call my mom and ask, but I'm pretty sure that didn't exist yet. Maybe, but I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. I don't think my parents had that. So, the next thing is a bassinet that goes next to your bed because the baby sleeps with you is that what bassinet means it's just it's mm-hmm. specifically the little bed that goes next to your bed that's yeah. like the raised thing yeah so yeah, we had one of those for flynn so i got the same kind that we had for flynn but it's double did flynn so ever sleep in his oh yeah yeah i guess a little mm-hmm. bit so um so we had well we got that one and then we got this like fancy schmancy expensive like billion dollar one that's called the snoo that everyone swears by and says is the best crib in the universe and he work, hated it yeah, it he did not work us. for him um but everyone loves that thing um, it just didn't work for Flynn. So anyway, um, I got a double bassinet that like slides and moves around so that like if I, you know, have a C-section or if I have a lot of stitches, however way this babies come out, I don't have to like stand up and go to a different bassinet to get whichever baby is crying. I can just kind of like, they're kind of on a, they're um, like a swivel, a swivel, a lazy Susan. If you will. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A lazy Susan for babies. Uh-huh. So I can kind of like get to the one I need to get to at all times. Yeah. And also these bassinets are like at a great level for moms who've just been through a big surgery or, or birth, you know, what do you mean um, level like, like they're at the right level. So you don't have to like strain oh, to pick okay. them up and, um, they're all very safe and have the right, you know, whatever. I don't think my parents, if my parents had a bassinet, I'm sure it would like, it was nothing like that. I'm sure I was just in like a homemade crib. Yeah. From, you know what I mean? That was next to the bed. I don't think. I don't think people did bassinets back then. Is that a thing? Or like a milk crate or something. Yeah. I don't, a milk I, don't know. Crate. I don't think, I don't think that was a thing back in the day, but I had to get one and I had to get yeah, a I'm twin sure one. It probably was. Um, Another thing I got is like a nursing pillow that's like a double nursing pillow for twins. I love how I don't have answers, like actual <laughs> answers. If my mom's listening. She's like, yeah, we had that. Why are you saying we didn't? Um, well, here's one that you will have. I think they just for. used pillows. Yeah, I think it was just pillows for sure. They didn't have like these specific nursing pillows. It's just crazy. We have all these products. They you have, have one, to buy. You have to buy these. You have to buy. We're it. doing one. So but they have a nursing pillow mm-hmm. that is for twins, right? Mm hmm. Cause I saw this. Mm-hmm. It's called like the double winger. 
I don't know. It's, it's double whammy. I don't remember what it's called, but it's but so, you just yeah got, got them here. Yeah, like you got them on the chesticles, and you, so in case somehow you know, that sounds more offensive to me than just saying. <laughs> well, you said you got them here, but like people are listening, so here could oh, right. be anywhere. So I was trying to let them know the area. <laughs> I'm just going like this. <laughs> He's just miming, holding breasts. Oh, these are their heads. <laughs> oh, those are heads. I'm, those yeah, are, these are the baby's heads. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't know how it works. I don't know how breastfeeding two babies at the same time works. I don't know. I'm just getting products that twin moms are telling me to get that they highly recommend. I've got baby carriers, so you can hold both babies at once on your chest or on your back. I've got, you know. Yeah. So baby carriers. Oh, I know my, I have a good one about this. Okay. My dad had uh -huh. one. <laughs> I, it was certainly not made of any sort of soft material. It was like wood and metal. Yeah. For we, sure. Yeah. We had one. So first the one we, that we, we have for the twins that just came in the mail, it freaks me out is that it is a, a baby carrier. Like as you see now they have an entire section in these stores but it's like you got one on the front of you mm -hmm. and one on the back of you. Mm -hmm. To whereas I thought it would be two on the, two front. On the front of we you. We have that one too. I got both. Right. But there is one where it's like one's on your back and one's on your front. Uh -huh. And then I'm holding the hand of the third. How oh, are we going to have three? That's <laughs> no, crazy. Um, but like, <laughs> I don't understand how that's going to work. But that's what I, we got in the mail the other day. And I was like, mm -hmm. what did you, but how is this even, how do you get one yeah. in the thing? And throw it, and then you just put them on like a backpack, and then you're loading another one in. I have no idea. I have no idea. I, we're just gonna have to we're just gonna have to figure right. it out. But when we were kids, you s go okay, on so, for yeah. what? Because I remember so what had, my dad had too. Yeah. So it's like essentially like a. It was like a wooden chair <laughs> yeah. with like metal bars. Yeah. That like came around like a backpack, but it was like the seat that we sat in was like metal and wood, like certainly not soft at all, and not buckled in because I remember he like knelt down one time I, I think it was rachel in there mm -hmm. he knelt down once and she fell out like the because he knelt down too far and she just like slid out over his head and like hit the ground oh really and um i can't remember which kid i'm pretty sure it was rachel my mom tells the story but i could be just completely making this up but I, i'm pretty positive that this happened maybe mm -hmm. it was me and that's why i have so many issues <laughs> but, it would explain <laughs> some things but it was certainly like crazy like, it's crazy that that's what we were in. Like, it was like, it was wooden metal. It yeah, was like, I can distinctly remember uh, it had backpack straps and then it, and it was just made out of like a thin, uh, certainly abrasive canvas kind of mm -hmm. material, like a canvas backpack material. It was like, it wasn't, and no padding, mm -hmm. nothing was padded mm -mm. and it was braced with a like aluminum, like yes. beach chair yes. metal that, rusted the day you oh, so yes. it was like rusty like aluminum with just <laughs> the thinnest like something you would make a kite out of can and then and you were just in it i remember being in that th like i've seen pictures and i remember mm -hmm. my little brothers being in the, the same one that was for me mm -hmm. on my dad's back when he's like we're riding bicycles around the right. neighborhood and you're just like <laughs> jostling around in this rusty metal kite canvas oh yeah backpacks whereas now they, oh my god! The like hooks sh and the shrouded clips in the, like yeah padding and it, they're so confusing. The like like we had a couple different kinds. We for never Flynn. really did one with. Flynn. I couldn't figure them out. They were so yeah, complicated. I would just carry him. And it's like you have like eight buckles on the back and three buckles on the front. It's like you have to have someone buckle you in on the back, and then he's in there, but he's screaming. Yeah, and, and then he like, didn't like. And then and he didn't like it. He hated um, it. So um, they're such a pain in the butt, but. Uh, everyone's recommending these two different kinds of twin yeah. ones. So I got them both and we'll see if they work, but I figure we have a two year old too. So it's like, we're, we're not going to have an option sometimes, but to carry them on some sort of carrier and hold his hand or put him on a leash or something. But yeah, there's, there's so many products. I'm very excited to get into, uh, car seats. Cause this is a very controversial topic now with car seats and what kind of buckles and what kind of car seat you get. And, like, I mean, it's a big debate and like people get so angry if it's, it's, it's crazy and it changes every year, the type of buckle you need and all this yeah. stuff. But what we had as kids, I want to get into in a second. Um, but first, I, of course, I need to say thank you to our next sponsor. Yeah. Strollers too. I want to get oh, into because that's, yeah. that's really stressing me out. But yeah. Okay. Who, here we who go. Do we have to think. Oh, of next? course we have something, you know, we're talking about imperfect things that we dealt with as uh. kids. 
But now it's a blessing to have imperfect foods. Yeah. It's a busy time of year, guys. The holidays sure are starting to rev up. We got Halloween coming. You're already like decorating for Christmas. My twins are coming. Mm -hmm. You know, lots of stuff happening, busy stuff. So it's okay that you're not perfect. And guess what? Neither is food. That's where imperfect food comes in. Imperfect Foods is a grocery delivery service that has created an entire line of sustainable groceries like pantry staples that taste delicious. Make a difference. Embrace imperfection and get your groceries delivered weekly with Imperfect Foods. All you have to do is sign up, personalize your weekly order, and then shop online each week and get sustainable groceries that help you invest in a better food system, all delivered straight to your front door. Did you know that in 2019, 35% of the food supply went unsold or uneaten in the U.S. Because of looks? Yeah. <gasps> Isn't that insane? Imperfect insane. Foods is working to turn this around by sourcing foods that would otherwise fall through the cracks of our food system. Goodbye packaging guilt and freezer pack Tetris. With Imperfect, you don't have to sacrifice the environment for your convenience. Imperfect Foods is the first grocery delivery company that makes it easy to return your packaging to them after every order. Unlike on-demand delivery companies, Imperfect delivers by neighborhood, a unique model that produces 25 to 75% fewer emissions than individual trips to the grocery store. Colleen, you know what I always say is, is, what? is I think I came up with this, is you don't judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. You and came I, up with that for sure. Yeah, I, just now. Um, yeah. And I would say that's certainly true with, foo with food. Like sometimes the weird, oh, yeah. the weird looking one is the tastiest. Oh, for sure. You know? Oh, yeah. Would you agree with that? Of course. The sentiment? Well, and... You know what kind of food I like best? The kind I don't have to go to the store for. Oh, yeah. The kind that just that shows kind. up on my uh, doorstep. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite kind <laughs> of food. So it works out. Because yeah. you like the ones that are imperfect, and I like the ones that just show up and I don't have to do any work. So... Imperfect Foods is perfect for us. So right now, Imperfect Foods is offering our listeners 20% off your first four orders when you go to imperfectfoods.com and make sure to use promo code RELAX. Again, 20% off your first four orders. That's up to an $80 value at imperfectfoods.com. Offer code using promo code RELAX. Try Imperfect Foods now and for a limited time, get 20% off your first four orders. Go to imperfectfoods.com and use relax to sign up. Go check it out. We love imperfect foods. And if you're watching, you can see now we love imperfect lighting. <laughs> yes. If you're watching the podcast today, you'll notice the lighting has shifted dramatically. And it's because I'm a sensitive mother trucker right now. And for some reason, the bright light in front of us is giving me a headache and making me nauseous. That's okay. We can do it in the dark um, if you want So to. it's a little darker now just so that I uh, don't vomit in the middle of this podcast or faint or something. Who knows? These babies make me do a lot of annoying things. Um, so anyway, we we're talking about crazy. We want you to be comfortable, products. all of us. Yes. Um, so car seats. Yeah. This one's really obnoxious to buy now because... Of course, I'm so grateful that they keep doing tests to make them as safe as possible for our babies. I want my kids to be in the safest, most high quality car seats in the world, obviously. Yeah, but you think this is a scam. Oh, I totally think it's a scam. Okay. I think I no, I think that um, I'm really grateful that, you know, we have the safest version of a car seat that we can have right now. Mm -hmm. But it's just interesting to me. Right. That all over the world, everywhere is doing these tests to make sure it's the safest car seat in the world and everywhere in the world has different rules as to what kind of harness car seat straps you need. So like I have a friend who lives in uh, England and her, when I saw mm. her baby in um, the car seat, I was like, <gasps> That's not the kind of car seat. you need a five point strap with the, the buckle up high and blah, blah, blah. Like I know all the like requirements that happen here yes, in California. Yeah. And by the way, it's not just, it's not just all over the world. It's like every state has different rules. It's like totally wild. Uh huh. So I think that like, we need to keep our kids as safe as possible and use the best one possible. But I think that companies take advantage of parents wanting the best for their kids. So they scare you with like, if you don't have this, it's going to be oh, real I, bad for your I kid. I was implying that I, that you, I thought you had told me that it was like, it's kind of like that, that thing whenever a new iPhone comes out, your iPhone kind of slows down, your old mm -hmm. ones slows down and stops working. That like when, when it's a new year, this car seat that they had previously said is the best one you can get and it's all approved in this, that. They were like, and the next year they're like, actually that one. Is not good. Not good. You right. need to get this new one. So much so that like, I, I don't think I told you this. I noticed um, the other day, in Target, 
they have on a on a wooden pallet, they have a giant box that says recycle your car seat here, mm -hmm. a giant box. And it was filled with car seats. Mm -hmm. Recycle your car seat here for 20 percent off your new car seat. Wow. And I was like, oh, that's because like. Um, they outlaw last year's model yep. every year so that you, you can't hand them down. You need to buy a whole, or mm -hmm. you need to buy a whole new one like mm -hmm. every year. Yeah. So yeah, that is what and I'm saying. Like, I would like to believe that that's because we are all trying to keep our kids and the youth of America. I think it's partly that, but I think it's also partly these, these companies trying to take advantage of scared, exhausted new parents and oh, we're the easiest targets yeah. for every across the board, every baby, pro, everything you could possibly need. Like we are so helpless mm -hmm. um, in, in our attempts to be the best parents and caretakers for young ones that we that we would would buy anything mm -hmm. as I still do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we will continue to do. Yes. But I just. You know, it's it's just frustrating that it's a little suspect. They're ta I just sometimes feel like they take advantage of tired, exhausted parents, and um, this stuff is very expensive. So anyway, so expensive. Yeah, it's very expensive. Um, so anyway, car and now seats, we need two. Yeah, we I still haven't gotten. We'll need car three. Seats. But I remember yeah. my sister being in a car seat that like just had like a, a it was like made of material like carpet, and it like just had like a. <laughs> It was just like a, a, I don't know how to explain it. Just like a, it just folded a up a bar that went down over her waist, like a, on I a roller no... coaster that doesn't go upside down. You know how they just put a bar over you and you're yeah. about to go on a roller coaster and you're like, this is just a bar over my waist. Like, this is certainly not going to keep me safe. Yeah. I feel like I remember my sister having that. Yeah. I can't confirm or deny. I can't recall. I cannot recall what mm -hmm. kind of car seat I had. If uh, yeah, I assumed that I had one. Mm hmm. I feel like I've seen pictures of me in one, but yeah. I, yeah. Well, I'll tell you this much. My dad, my mom had, um, you know, we had two cars mm -hmm. and we had like a minivan. And then my dad had like a two seater, like little red Honda, but he had four kids. And so we would just lay in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is something that I know it sounds totally nuts to anyone listening who is younger or like whatever but like yeah i feel like this was pretty common maybe i'm totally insane but like i feel like it's pretty common back in our day to just kind of be like you just lay in the back seat i can remember like, like a like catching a ride with like a friend's parents like a little league game and we were just in the back of like a pickup truck just like yeah. in the bed of a pickup truck or um the friend's parents who had that station wagon where in the very, in oh, what, yeah, what the was the trunk, facing, but the oh. rear facing seats. <gasps> that was amazing. It was so awesome. But when you think about it, no car does that now because it's insanely dangerous. Yeah. It's the first place you're going to get. Oh yeah. It is rear ended. It's, it's and horrible. if you just have a bunch of kids just like. Up against the, I, yeah. yeah. And we would like open the back hatch door. You know right. what I mean? Like, by the way, we are not recommending anyone do these things. These are all extremely unsafe. And we look back on it and go like, this is wild. So like, yeah, as we're, as I'm buying car seats, I'm like remembering like, Oh my God, I would, I would go in the back of my grandpa's pickup truck and he'd drive us all to the beach. Like me and like a bunch of cousins, like there'd be a bunch of little yeah, kids. You got, if anyone has a lot of cousins, you have lots of cousins. I, I do. And, um, we'd all sit in the back of my grandpa's pickup truck and drive to the beach or the park or whatever. And my dad would like, and we would, by the way, beg to be the one who got, got to, to ride, lay yeah. in the back like in the trunk. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, it's bad saying trunk. Cause it sounds like it's like enclosed in, like it was, the trunk was like a big window. Like it was like an, op you know what I'm saying? Like, like it wasn't like, like, like a, an enclosed. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, we would, we would all beg to be the one who got to like roll around back there. And we would, I remember, and sometimes they would need to take the car seats out of the van, like the back seats. And so sometimes we got to do it in the van and that was really fun. Cause we would like, purposefully dramatically roll whenever there was like a stop or a turn. We thought it was very fun. Mm -hmm. It's like roll around the back of the van. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my parents had like a big Chevy van that had like in, in the back, it had like the two kind of captain's chairs and then it had a, a bench seat in the back, but that folded down into kind of a bed. Mm -hmm. So when, when we would do longer road trips, you would want to be the kid that oh, got yeah. the bed, but there was no way they would want us to be buckled in, but there was no way to lay on it whilst being, unless it was oh, like, yeah. you would have to do it, the, just the lap belt really loose. Yeah, yeah. So you could kind of twist and lay down. Um, yeah, I wasn't safe. Yeah, <laughs> none of it was safe. And I would never let my children do that um, now. 
And, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't safe then it's not safe now, but it's something that I did. And everyone that I know, all my friends and family, like it was just something that everyone did, um, back in the day. But, uh, but yeah, now, now it's like he has his, his car seat is, is really cool and all has all the, has, you his know, cup holder, his all that stuff. His toys and yeah. all that. So, um, what was the thing you wanted to talk about? There was one other product. stroller. Stroller. Okay. I don't know how we're gonna do this because Flynn. I don't think. We'll, I mean, he's he's two. He will be three when we have them. But it's not like he's. I mean, I guess he can be walking alongside us. But are we gonna? So there's strollers that have two places for the babies, and then like a stand bar. Yeah, for I've him. seen that. Mm -hmm. Are we like, gonna get that? We have to. I guess so, huh? <laughs> but is that going to be this massive thing? It is. Yes, it's huge. Because there was like a twin stroller that I saw that was recommended on some website. Um, that they were like, it's good because it's so compact. But I'm like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's that's the one. But then I was like, oh, we no, we need we need, we need like the a, safest and the well, yeah, well, it's a stroller. It's not. Yeah. They're not no, going. They're not going seventy five on a highway in a stroller. No, you want to safest sure stroller. What's going to happen? Yeah, the right kind of buckle. The uh, good wheels that aren't going to like bounce over them all yeah. around and like. Um. Anyway. Well, yeah, the stroller that Flynn has now it has like mountain bike shocks yeah. on it, like it has all these things again. Like a, it has a snack tray and a mm -hmm. cup holder and a whole thing to hold my coffee cup and like a mm -hmm. thing underneath. Torres, I think my stroller. Mm -hmm when I was a kid was just what I can describe as two metal umbrella handles. Yes. I had the exact same. And one. you just kind of folded it out. And again, just like itchy thin canvas the material thinnest. and like rusty metal. And it just, whoosh, and it was it like was, cheap hotel and, bed sheet material. And it was like, um, like the wheels were like, not nice rollerblade wheels, but the the rollerblades that you would get at like Kmart that mm -hmm. barely roll. Like they don't mm -hmm. even have ball bearings in them. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like, screeching on the like you know what i mean you oh, just yeah. felt every pebble these are the strollers by the way that they let people buy for their children like if you have like a baby doll like right, right, essentially yes like a baby yeah, doll a baby stroller doll stroller that was a little bit bigger and but that's an, what we an had, actual yeah. kid yeah that's what definitely what we Torres had to. now like and by the way my parents still have that. And that is what Flynn goes on <laughs> in <know. laughs> once whenever. And he's he looks visits. he looks around like, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> he sits in this insane stroller. I, I think know. these things are still like things people buy. I don't think that that's like a sure, yeah. Of course, yeah. Recalled thing, but it's like, yeah, it's it's certainly what we had as kids. For sure, for yeah, sure. Yeah, whereas now they're like they've got really fancy these wild wheels that like or yeah they, well his his aunt is they're like you have to pump them up with like a bike tire pump like they're they have air in them and they're yeah like i said they have shocks to shock strollers too by things. the way that's another thing i feel like they do that with like we had a great stroller for flynn and when he turned a year old we got a letter that was like this is recalled buy a new one here's our newest strollers right. and i was like we had this a year and it was so expensive no, you know so it's like it's it's really crazy how much stuff you have to get but back in the good old days <laughs> yeah it was... when people weren't safe um i think they were safe i mean they were as safe I only as got they knew a few how to be stitches and it was never because of any of these things yeah you know same yeah same as me so well i think they did great yeah they did great oh of course they did great i mean they were as safe as they knew how to be back then you know what i'm saying they yeah. did a great job all right, I know we have a bunch more fun stuff to talk about. Was that a sentence? Was that English that I just said? I know we have a bunch yeah, more perfect. stuff. Oh, good. I feel like in my brain, I don't heard, doubt yourself. If you're doing great, I, know, I feel like I heard myself leave. It's words nice and out dark in sentence. here now. Like you're doing fine. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I know. Wait, what did I just say? Oh my god, my brain is not working. Wait, what did I just say for real? What sentence did I just say? I think you just on a loop or just repeating over and over again. What did I just say? And then not remember. <laughs> I said, anything. "Oh, we have a bunch more fun things to talk about." Yeah. Which still doesn't sound like correct grammar to me. Anyway, we do have more things that we're going to talk about. But first, <laughs> you've totally gotten that across, by the way. People are now at the edge of their seats. What? Whoa. Oh, but first, I want to say thank you <laughs> to stamps.com. We love stamps.com so much in this household. I run a business, guys. 
I am my own business with my YouTube channels and with touring and merch and all the fun things that we get to do. It's a lot of shipping going on from this residence. A lot residence. of shipping, yes, of products and prizes and um, fun stuff. And so uh, it's really, really wonderful to have stamps.com because it eliminates all this time that you would be spending at the post office where you could just be at home working. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's very wonderful. So if you've got a small business, you know that there's nothing more valuable than your time. So stop wasting it on trips to the post office. Stamps.com makes it easy to mail and ship right from your computer. Save time and money with stamps.com. Send letters and packages for less with discounted rates from USPS, UPS, and more. So like I said, we are always shipping stuff out of our house. So this has been really, really helpful for us. Mm -hmm. um, we don't waste as much time at the post office, you know? You don't have to wait in line. Yeah, I respect what they do and support our postal service. But oh, of course. I don't, but I don't want to be going there all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so this has uh, been really, really helpful. And I know it's helped a lot of small businesses. So yeah. um, you guys should definitely go check it out. Since 1998, Stamps.com has been an indispensable tool for nearly one million businesses. So Levy, what can you tell us about Stamps.com? Well, I know that Stamps.com brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS shipping right to your computer. Whether you're uh, an office sending invoices, a side hustle Etsy shop, or a full-blown warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com will make your life easier. Mm -hmm. All you need is a computer, standard printer, no special supplies or equipment. Within minutes, you're up and running printing official postage uh, for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send it. And, <laughs> and you'll what get else? exclusive discounts on postage and shipping from USPS. <laughs> and UPS. <laughs> Once your email is ready, you just schedule a pickup or drop it off. No traffic, no lines. Cut the confusion out of shipping with Stamp.com's new rate advisor tool. You can compare shipping rates and timelines to easily find the best option. Wow. Save time and money with Stamps.com. Do it. There's no risk. And with our promo code RELAX, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. What? No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of this homepage, and type in relax. Relax. That's stamps.com, promo code relax. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Don't do it. Ever. Stay home. Ever again. Uh yeah, they really are wonderful and, and we use them all the time. It's been a game changer because it saves so much time. And when you run a small business, that's what you want the most is more time. And so it, it offers that for you. It's wonderful. Check it out. All right, lovey. All these other fun things we had to talk about. You built it up. <laughs> what you got? I, you know, I was poking around um, these what mom websites. I wouldn't call them dad websites because they seem certainly geared towards like women. Why? And what makes them geared more towards women? Because they're called like motherhood.com or mom's life or mom, mom town USA. Right. Like okay. they're not called, there's no like the dadder or the dadder. Dad. That's not a good name for it. Well, it should just be parents. Dad should be. I'm sure there's a website called parents. Not everyone is as lucky as me and has a um, husband who pulls as much weight as you do. But I, I was poking around these for like twin uh, twin needs advice or like hints, things that you like would be good for you if you were expecting multiples. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a couple things that I found um, interesting. This uh, person. Yeah. A mom. Okay. Recommended a diaper subscription. Hmm. So that, because, and this, I was like, hmm, because even with, with just one child, it seems like we're always out Yeah, something. It's like always, like whenever I go anywhere, you're like, and diapers, and you know wipes, what I mean? And diapers and wipes, yeah. Diapers and wipes, diapers and wipes. Like I didn't even, I'm not, I mean, they're not sponsored, but I'm just saying there's companies apparently that provide this, this service. Because this thing is saying their estimate for when you have twins that you're going to go through 400 to 600 diapers per month. Whoa, that's a Is lot. Is that real? Probably. They, they, a they, month? Did you forget how often Flynn like had poop explosions? And things. What are we going to do when. When, when they're little baby. Yeah, I. that sounds What are we going to do when they both have a poop explosion at the same time? I don't know. Did you. Ha, I remember cloth diapers. I don't think I had a cloth diaper. 
Those exist now. They're like very. That's very green. in. Yeah. It's very in right well, now. Well, I'm looking diapers. at this and I'm like, that's terrible for the environment. If there's cloth that diapers. Many. No, 400 oh, to 600 oh, diapers yeah. a diapers month. Diapers are really bad for the environment. It's very like, that bad. That makes me be like, oh, we need to figure something else out. Cloth diapers are like um, really, really, uh, you know, helpful for the earth. They're you have to wash them a lot Uh uh-huh because they have poop in them and pee in them right all the time um so there's that washing i i we don't wash our own clothes ever like we let piles and piles and piles so like i just would be very nervous (laughs) that we would run out of cloth well it's nice to think it's something to aspire to for sure of course yeah Um, yeah i remember i think there were I don't think we were in cloth Am I diapers. Am making that up? No, I think, I'm sure it exists. I'm sure you're- I, That's maybe? what people did, right? For centuries? Well, way back in the day, yeah. You know, they also used rags the beginning instead of, of other things for like, feminine products. When was, the, when was the disposable diaper invented even? Oh gosh, he's going to look this up. Johnson & Johnson. We know them. We hear about them nowadays. Oh yeah. Uh, introduced the first mass marketed disposable diaper in the US in 1961. Hmm. Procter and Gamble unveiled Pampers in 1970. Wow! Uh, American babies go through uh, 350 thousand tons of disposable diapers. Um, somehow, that only makes up 0.3 percent of U.S. Mun- municipal waste. Hmm. Uh, so only 0.3 percent of waste diapers, but that's 350 thousand tons. Whoa! <laughs> what are we talking? About? I'm just the reading stats out of diaper, diaper stats. What is happening? This is where you come for diaper stats. Relax, podcast. <laughs> just you, that, you, this is this is free for people to listen to. They're listening to this for free. Oh my and god! And they're getting this information for the rest of their life. They are, so they will know. Just reading diaper they statistics. They will know. Why are we doing these this? facts? And this is what I've always wanted to do: was tell people these things. Was bring but, this information. Yes, we're gonna go through a lot of diapers. But here's the thing: uh, this is. What I'm stressed about. I'm not stressed about diaper stats. I'm not stressed about how many diapers we're going to go through. What I am stressed about is when Flynn had poop explosions, lovey, which was very often. Just listen. You can't drop it. You're just you're just so excited to talk about poop in mass on no, this podcast. Love, listen. This is really important. What? It was all hands on deck. It was you hold the legs. I'll hold the hands. We need someone yeah. else to clean this. There's poop on me. There's poop on the floor. Yeah, it's gonna. There's gonna and be a lot of and just it, poop everywhere. Every yeah. poop explosion. You and I both had to be there to yeah. make it. So if there are two poop explosions at the same time, well, yeah. I guess we just hope that I'm just gonna knock on wood that it's, that they're not at the same time. Oh man, I don't. I feel like it's inevitable that at least once they're both gonna have poop explosions at the same time. For sure. Yeah. And I'm, I'm even going to say here on this podcast in public, they're going oh, to publicly. It only happens in public. Yeah, it only happens at the most inconvenient time. Yeah, like never. We've, I at think we talked about this before. Like as with you, when you all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. are motivated in that you way, know what I found out it's always in a Target. I found or a out craft a store. craft store uh, and bookstores are where it really happens. But yeah, when you I walk will, into Michael's Crafts, an employee for some immediate. reason just hands you a bathroom key. I'm like, how Listen, did they know? It's it's like if I was ever constipated, I would. I just now I know. I just I can just go. It's to Michael's. your prunes. It's your. It's my prunes. Yeah, Michael's is my prunes. But I found out that you know if you ask my family, they like my sister and my mom. They would always joke about like Colleen if she goes into a Michael's Crafts or a Target. She'll have to poop immediately. And I found out there's like a whole community of people who feel this way because on TikTok. <laughs> I knew you were going to say it. I knew that was the next <laughs> sentence. Yeah. On TikTok, there's like a bunch of TikToks about this. Like me, the second I walk into a Target and it's like, peace out, going to the bathroom. Like, I don't know what it is about a Target or a Michaels. But here's the thing, guys. I passed on this gift to our son. You sure did. Because every time. Which isn't, I mean, it hasn't been a lot because he only just recently started going to stores with us with masks on and stuff. But um, anytime we go to a craft store, which has been a couple times, he poops like a lot. Mm-hmm. And anytime we go into a big store, I feel like he's like pooping. Yeah. Just the, like me. The, the he doesn't ba- look the like back me, but of I the minivan, on. you can like fold down the seats and it kind of becomes like this flat thing. Like it's gotten a lot of use. In parking lots, me having to take him out from the store and and change him, which is always a strange thing to do in a busy parking lot because mm-hmm. there's constantly people walking by and there's just 
Yeah. That going on there. It's a lot I don't to know. take in. Did we talk about the one time that he pooped in Michael's? And did we talk about this it's, in the podcast? It's relaxed podcast. Of course we have. Yeah. And like you had just cleaned out the car still can't and for stop some you. reason. He's still going to just do it. Over well, just, I just can't get over that. Like for some reason, you as a dad, knowing how much he poops was like, I'm going to clean out this car. It's going to look just beautiful and yeah, clean and, and perfect. And you were like, we don't need a diaper and wipes in here. And we had no diapers and no wipes right. in the car during a huge poop moment. Mm hmm. Um, do we talk about that on here? Yeah, I, I told you before you then retold it again. I go, yes, we for sure did. And then you started telling it. I go, oh, you're going to tell it again. And you told it again. And then you're asking me, how are you doing? Well, I, it's just a shocking story in case they missed it last time. It's just shocking to me that that happened. So anyway. Um, we fulfilled our poop talk quota. You know, we always talk about episode. poop in the episodes. Another recommendation, which we don't have, is a... Costco or bulk buying kind of store membership. Yeah. It's like buy in bulk. You know what? I'm going to say it. I'm not a fan of Costco. And I'm not saying that like a. I used to. We had. We didn't have Costco when I was growing up. We had Sam's Club. Yeah. We which have is. That too. Do, yeah. Is that out here? Mm -hmm. I think that's like the Walmart version of it or something. I think they own that. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but I loved it. They had. I loved it because my mom would take me and it was like, it would be just me and my mom. And they had like. um. So I remember they had like a little samples. thing inside there. That, well, not samples. I was going to say they had like a soft serve ice cream place and mm. it was like the best soft serve ice cream. And like, it was kind of like Ikea. They had like hot dogs for a dollar and they were yeah, like this the is Costco best Costco too. Dogs. Yeah. The best hot dogs in the world are outside Costco and soft serve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I liked the experience of that store, mm -hmm. um, but I've never, I never really thought about its practicality for. I just we're always. The, we're the kind of, if we need something, we go have to run to the grocery store. Yeah, I, I I hated going because it was like always a huge family like trip and there wasn't Such anything an fun. In the store. And they had samples like that you can taste all the different stuff. And it was always gross. It was like I'd run to each sample, like hoping it would, I'd like it. And then and it's like then you're thirsty because you just. <laughs> Richard, I said, well, what's free in here? What's the little free <laughs> bite of garbage I can have? I'm talking I'm not sure what I'm talking about. I'm like talking about like paper towels or like. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. You know about. what I mean? With the kind of things. I know what you're talking about. I'm just not a fan of Costco. Juice boxes. I feel like I also was always like forced to get clothes from Costco that I oh, hated. Oh yeah, just like a 38 pack of socks. <laughs> just like white. No, like shirts. Like a oh. 38 pa pack of like panties or shirts. And it was like, and it's just the clothes. Kirkland shirts. Kirk <laughs> <laughs> The fact that you remember it, Kirkland. <laughs> oh my God, Kirkland shirts. <laughs> why is that so funny to me? I, I think we're tired. It made me laugh so hard too. It's, just, uh, it's so stupid. It's so dumb. Do you think they have that? <laughs> if they do, I'm getting it for you for it's your because birthday. Because everything is just like a jug of. <laughs> Pretzels, Kirkland, Kirkland pretzels, Kirkland everything, uh, Kirkland, Kirkland everything, Kirkland shoes, Kirkland socks, Kirkland shirts. Kirkland shoes is really bad. <laughs> just like this gross pair of white sneakers that just says Kirkland. Like in the you know what? I want those so yeah. bad if they exist. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, good old Kirkland, man. <laughs> who's, who is that? <laughs> who's Kirkland? And I hope he's a billionaire. Billion, yeah, private jets <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> oh my God. I can like see the font. Like I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> that cursive. That K. <laughs> okay, anyway. That's, on, that should end it. On that note, yeah. we're going to go. Thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. For, um, like, truly, thank you for listening. That's and I really uh, hope you enjoy you our like date night. This is what date night's like for us talking about baby products and laughing really hard at the idea of Kirkland t-shirts. <laughs> Kirkland jeans. <laughs> that actually does exist. No! I am confident my dad currently owns a pair of Kirkland, Kirkland jeans. jeans? Kirk <laughs> <laughs> Kirkland straight cut <laughs> denim. Yes. I am very confident my dad has All right. those. Thanks for All right. Listening. Thanks for listening. Bye. Goodbye. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.